Ms. Ramirez from uh, the state of Illinois. The state of Illinois and a daughter of immigrants, yes. Uh, so thank you, Chairman. Over the last few months, uh, my Republican colleagues, you could tell when it happened, have transitioned from using Secretary Mayorkas as a scapegoat for a global migration crisis to now Vice President Harris, who they have wrongfully labeled the border czar. They claim that they want today's hearing to be about policies, so I want to spend time talking about policies, certainly not charts, because we get the dates and the charts wrong here. At the taxpayer's expense, Republicans want to use mass deportation to rip families apart. They want to unconstitutionally strip citizenship from U.S. citizens who, immigrant, who have immigrant parents, and they want to expand this border wall that has already cost about $45 million uh, per mile. And folks, we've been talking about this in the last uh, almost two hours here. None of this will fix our outdated immigration system that we haven't fixed since 1986 when I was three years old, or increase our ability to stop fentanyl trafficking, stem the unlawful flow of weapons across our border, and certainly it won't dismantle these cartels that we should be dismantling. Talking about immigration specifically, we have more than 30 years of data on enforcement-only proposals and policies based on deterrence work, and they simply don't work. Even these cruel actions of the former administration, they didn't actually reduce migration or improve order at the border. Instead, they've resulted in chaos and people forced to wait in unsafe places and women and children going through the worst cases and experiences much like my own mother experienced when she crossed the border. So folks, we should be talking about creating legal pathways, and I understand that's Committee on Judiciary, and I wish that you and I were working on that. That is actually what we should be doing together, creating legal pathways, but it doesn't seem like that's what we want to do, because vilifying immigrants seems to be the only priority in this committee, and certainly with most of my colleagues on the other side. So Sheriff Hathaway, I want to hear from you. Um, in the next minute or so, what should Congress be focusing on to secure the border and support border communities like yours? Well, specifically, there is a dividing line between federal and state law enforcement. Um, you know, the federal agencies in my town, federal officers, outnumber 30 to 1. There's 30 federal officers for every one local officer, so that includes one of the largest Border Patrol stations in the U.S. and the third largest that are both in my county large uh, contingents of CBP, OFO, those are the guys in the blue uniforms on the border that do the inspections at the ports of entry. And, you know, frankly, I don't want to do their job, and they don't want to do my job. I, I do the same job as the 3,000 other sheriffs in the U.S. There's about 3,000 counties and 3,000 elected sheriffs in the U.S. I treat everybody the same. Our focus is violent crime and property crime. So, you know, as far as it's up to you what you decide on the federal issues that have to do with the border, but to me, I don't see a bigger impact of, you know, crime or property damage be, with anything to do related to the border. So financially, I don't need no more support. I don't need more legal support. But I do think you need, Congress needs to solve the issues on the border to create legal pathways for workers. So, Sheriff, you think that this Congress should be focused on creating legal pathways, yes or no? That's correct. And you think that this Congress should do the thing it hasn't done in almost 40 years, which is actually fix the immigration system, is that yes? Fix immigration, look at the Farm Modernization Act, and mm -hmm. consider getting these agricultural visas yeah. in, the, in place. Got it. Well, I agree with those two things here, and I think that vilifying immigrants is really dangerous, and it actually reminds me that, it reveals to me that we have a short memory here. In the 18 and early 1900s, Italians, Irish, Germans, and others from parts of Europe who are the ancestors of many of the people in this room, whom you carry their last name, now with pride, were treated as less than human. And if our country today were to suddenly face increased migration from that region, I would be with you protecting them like how. So it's really hard for me to watch the very same grandchildren of these people who were harmed, who were neglected, who were abandoned and starved, doing the same thing to others that were done to their grandparents, which is why every single chance that I'm in this committee, I'm going to remind you of your roots, and I'm going to remind you that our job is to create the kind of policy so that we create legal pathways so that people that come to this country from Europe 
or from Latin America are able to come here, yes, the legal way, without experiencing the things they do at the border. With that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. The gentlelady yields.